This is day two of our prayer camp meeting 2012. I welcome you for those of you who are joining me and joining the Dikai Mary's ministries um, to fast and pray and to usher in a new season. I welcome you. I welcome you to this broadcast. Well, as it goes, I want to read to you the text for day two. And uh, let me just go ahead and tell you that I am reading to you. Remember how my tradition is, my culture. I'm talking about the gospel culture and tradition that I follow. It is this. Never leave a text until you've exhausted that text. Do not hurriedly leave a passage of the Bible until you have gotten every goodies out of it. So we are reading again for the second day. We are reading again Romans chapter 8 verse 19. The psalm for you to use today on day 2 is Psalm number 2. The same text for day 1 is the same text for day two. I I believe that by day three we will go to a new text. <laughs> we will go to a new text. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let me read to you what Romans chapter 8, verse 19 says. And by the way, some of you will wonder and say, why doesn't this guy use a new text for day two? The reason is um sometimes you you might think that we humans are so much in a hurry over the things of god that we lost a lot of opportunities for the spirit of god to share vital truth with us you see it is not about how much of the pages of the bible you read how much chapters how many verses it is your ability to pick one word and that word is able to manifest the fullness of God in your life. It is, it is not how much of talking you're doing or how much of reading you're doing into you. Those things are very good. It is how much of your ability to stay in the presence of God in such a way that you stay there long enough with either a word, a phrase, a, 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 a verse, a sentence. You stay there with God and the Holy Spirit is able to take what is of God and bring it down to you. It's all about the, the, the presence of God. That is what we mean when we say the theme. The theme for this, um, for this uh, prayer camp meeting is manifest the fullness of God. You cannot manifest the full of the fullness of God by yourself. You know that it is not true that you can manufacture the things of God all by yourself. It is what God has to initiate into your life. It is not something that you can just go out and say, I want to be this, I want to do that. It is something that when you sense God initiating something, then you tap into that initiation of God, that move of God, and then mighty things begin to happen in your life. Then people begin to ask you, how did you do this as though it was a good idea from you? It is simply obedience that bet the presence. So uh, for those of you who want to fast, who want to who wanna spend longer time in, in prayers and in fasting throughout this second day, October the 20th, please use Psalm number two to occupy you more. Okay, let me read to you. Romans chapter 8 verse 19. It says this. It says, I'm reading it from the Hebrew Bible in English 
without no translation tools. This is what he says. Creation has a premonition uh, for the unveiling of the sons of God. Creation has a premonition for the unveiling of the sons of God. Let me read to you in Old English. It says, For the earnest expectation of the of the creature, instead of creation, it's a creature, waits for the manifestation of the sons of the living God. God bless to us the reading from His holy word, and unto His name be the praise and glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The topic for today says, do something about your situation now. Do something about your situation now. A lot of people wait until things get out of hand before they do something about it. Why do you want to wait until you are at the point of your death? That's when you want to attend university. Why do you want to wait until when you've given the best part of your life away? That's when you want to enter into ministry and serve God. Why is it that when you saw certain moves, certain steps by your mother-in-law your father-in-law you did not call your husband or your wife and said this move there is something suspicious about it why is it that when you saw the kind of going in and going out by your wife or by your husband that you were not able to sit either him or her down and said darling we need to talk about this thing is there anything i'm doing wrong is there any way i'm not giving you the fullness of attention and the issue will have been addressed at that point in time you see the footstep of going in and going out by your son and by your daughter you saw a car parked out there and the car will always come and pick your son or pick your daughter. And he or she will always give you an excuse of who those people are. You peep through the window and you look at their faces. You can't make out who they are because they have dreadlock. You, can, you are not able to sit them down as an oracle of God, as the administrator of your own house, and look eyeball to eyeballs at your son and daughter and said, we need to have a discussion about this. There are certain things I do not like and I want them to stop. Sooner or later, when you refuse to do something about your situation, immediately, Peter J. Daniel talks about mastery over procrastination. Do it now. If you are not able to tell your daughter or your son this is the time you need to wake up and you need to get prepared and go to school if they keep giving you different excuses day in day out pretty soon they know they will not be able to finish high school they will not be able to finish college have you been able to sit your family members down and let them know the reasons why what you are telling them they need to do it have you yourself been able to be a good example to other people at your job church ministry situation in the family or are you just a talking head that has no action to show for it 
let me also go ahead to say this why are you waiting until the sickness get worse before you start to consult with God before you start to go and see a doctor a lot of us we wait for so long until things get out of hand have you been able to draw yourself back and sit back and take a deep breath a deep breath and say this advice that this person is giving to me is it godly or is it not do they want to destroy my home do they want to destroy my life or my family or not someone is telling someone out there to leave his or her job and you think that the emotion the emotional attachment they have towards you is of God it is not and they are telling you they are, they are, they are, they are whipping your emotion up why you should leave that relationship why they, they're giving you intellectual opportunity for evil and you think this is right but it is not right they're encouraging you do something about your situation now when your son began to talk back to you in a very indiscriminate and violent way what did you do about it and nip it off of the ball today you sit back and wondered who are your enemies that you wronged you blame it on a father that does not want to be involved in an unnecessary warfare with you or you blame it on a mother that has gone ahead to get married that she is the reason why you are the way you are when you began to hear voices inside you what did you do about those voices when you began to see shadows in your dream of people coming to have sex with you in your dream of people taking you to the water of you flying in the air like a witch of people taking you to where they are doing some voodoo stuff what did you do about it when one person died in your family through accident another person died through cancer another person became lost his job another person his family broke down what did you do about it you thought they were just natural and normal stuff the text that we read today talks about that even the creation itself the, the the created universe has hope it has hope god has built into the universe he has spoken embedded encoded into the universe the ability for the universe to have hope that there is redemption for it I believe very strongly that the redemption that Jesus brought was not just for us but it also for all creation I'm not talking about everybody will be saved that's not what I mean what I mean is that the created universe with us will survive eternity the only people who will not survive eternity with God are those who reject Jesus while they are in this physical planet but even the eight in which their bodies will be buried will outlive them in eternity with God that is true there is hope for a new heaven and a new earth therefore all the bloodshed that has been shared on this earth all the wickedness that has been corrupted in the universe by the enemy 
in his evil, evil, evil abode, evil kingdoms, in quote, although he doesn't have a kingdom, really. And on earth, through wicked people in union with the enemy, there is no hope for them. He says, creation has a premonition. There is an earnest expectancy from creation. The created universe, the planet, the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth, the trees, the rivers, the animal world. Everything is having a hope that one day there is going to be redemption. And they are right. There will be redemption for them. Then, it's not just that creation is waiting for God to come and save it. Although Jesus has already initiated redemption for creation itself. And we are part of the benefactors of this redemption. The entire universe is waiting on us to initiate redemption for it. That's why you see that when you assume your place as a ruler and as a leader, in any way that you live, in the geography where God locates you, you will realize that the environment changes because you live in that place. Because you bring the things of God, the life of God, to the universe around you. That's how it is. Many of you do not have hope. If the universe has hope, why is it that you pray to God, yet you do not have no hope? The universe has hope. Why is it that you do not have hope? And you are praying. You are participating in praying to God to get your problems solved. But do you have hope that God is listening to you? And that God is doing something about your situation? And that on the cross, he's already done something about it. And you have to reenact and bring about and manifest what he's already done for you. Next thing that I want to bring to your remembrance today is the issue of sonship we are the sons of God manifesting will be manifested is already manifested what does it mean to be a son it means that you belong to the house we belong in a government of God that is theocratic, where God rules. I belong to a kingdom. There is a king. There is a king. I live in America. Obama is the president of our nation. Good luck, Jonathan, is the president of the nation that I was born. But I live in two different, now I live in, <laughs> let me put it this way, I live in two different planets. I live on planet Earth, and I also am a citizen of planet Heaven. This is true, and that's true about you. I belong to a kingdom in which God has dominion. I am under His dominion. That is why a lot of people do not get their prayers answered. They do not get their needs met because they just want a quick prayer. And then they don't want God to really be involved in their lives. If that is your kind of lifestyle, that might possibly be the reason why your prayers are not being answered. Is you want God to have something to answer your prayer, to, to release his force, his ability, his goodness into your life, but you do not want him to be involved with you on a daily basis. For me, look at how my prayer has been this day. Lord, my gift is not enough. 
the gift you've given to me is not enough. I need you to follow me so that I can follow you in obedience. My giftedness is not enough. My education is not enough. My family is not enough. My friends, they are not enough. I need you to visibly, tangibly follow me in this world. Then the gift will be a blessing to people. Then it will be easy for me because you will initiate things that I do. Those things that you initiate will be easier for me to do. Kenneth E. Hagen talks about when, when the glory of God comes into his meetings, all he needs to do is wave his hand and things begin to happen. But with the anointing and the giftedness, you, you do a lot of things, you walk it up, you do a lot of singing, a lot of stuff for things to happen. That is why a lot of ministers get it wrong. They now begin to cut corners and begin to fish. Begin to try to use a human idea to try to enforce divine reality. Whereas it should have been that the visible presence of God is there with that person. And then the visible presence kicks in the gift. It kicks in the office. It kicks in the, the visible presence of God kicks in the anointing, which is the giftedness. The ability to operate in your office will be kicked in mightily by the visible presence of God. Sonship means that you have authority. Jesus said, I give you authority. Sonship means you have authority in the house. You have authority to rule. You are a hey, a prince, a princess. The aid belongs to you to rule and lead. And some of you have given up leadership and rulership. Some of you have chosen to be leaders and forget about ruling. Some of you have chosen to rule and forget about leading. Go back and watch my video on YouTube and Daily Motion that is called, uh, it is called um, Prophetic Insight, Negotiate the Present. Very important for you in whatever nation you are from, you need to go and look at that video. It's very, very important. I discovered that in today's world, people, a lot of people do not want to learn, they do not want to read. They are not interested, they just need to be entertained. And that's why the politicians and the business class knows this about the fickleness of the human mind and of the human spirit. And so they can, they can sell you anything. They can give you, a, they can use you for anything. As far as they have through, through your being dumb, they get power and profit, they will do it against you. Even using religion against you. And that, that, that's, that's not, that doesn't make you smart if you allow that to happen to you. Let me say this. As a son, you have authority to speak the language of God, to live like, like a human being, and to act like God on earth. During this, during this, uh, this one month of prayer and fasting, begin to do something about your situation. You are not doing something about your situation as a son of God. Sonship is for both male and female. If for both male and female, you are a son before God. There is no daughter, no daughtership in the language of God. Every man and every woman is a son before God. Begin to claim, find out from scriptures or follow my ministry. And find out what is your place in the house of God. Because many of you are not trained, are not learned. You do not have the opportunity in your church or group you belong to to be exposed to what I'm talking about. Yeah. Today, as I was preparing to aid this broadcast for the second day, the Holy Spirit ministered to me. God shared with me and said, if you really need anything to happen quickly, if you want things to begin to happen in your life, pick things one by one and focus. Just concentrate on one thing at a time and pray in the spirit concerning that need. And you will see things happen. I learn a new thing. 
Because sometimes I just want to pray in the language that I could understand, but he's telling me, listen, learn to enter into the realm of tongues and interpretation. Learn to enter into the realm of singing in tongues and praying about a particular need to intercede, whatever, to sing in the spirit. Hallelujah. As a son, you should be able to build God an empire on earth. And that's what I'm out to do. I've been praying to God to give me people who will listen to me. Who will, who are humble enough, meek enough to want the things of God. And to support the work of God. I urge you not to allow your entitlement as a son of God to just lay wasted. There is a lot God wants to do with you. Begin to say to him, Lord, let your will begin to happen to me. I give you the license. I authorize you to permit your will to begin to visit me. God, make moves for me, for I am a son. And because I'm a son, I am entitled to who you are. I'm entitled to your voice. I'm entitled to your things, to your goodness. I'm entitled to your money. I'm entitled to every good thing. I'm entitled to your health. I'm entitled to everything that you have. You have. Whatsoever God has belongs to you. I want you to do something about your situation. Change your situation now. Do something about your situation now. And if you do not know how to be a son of God, hear what the word of God says in the Gospel of John. As many as received him, even to those who believe in his name, he gave them the authority to be the sons of God. Some translation says the children of God. Now I want to begin to minister to you. Eternal Father, there are so many people in hopeless and helpless situations who do not know what to do with their life. People of God, as I'm praying right now, I see a light appear. I see a light appear in front of me. So that means God is present. Hallelujah. So the prayer is going to change. Lord, let your will begin to manifest on the earth over these loved ones who are watching this broadcast and participating in this fasting and prayer with me in this camp meeting. Lord, I begin to pray and thank you for your visible presence, O Holy Spirit. Move as you wish. Minister to people in their different needs around the world. Disease, I bring you under the name and the blood of the Lamb of God. The blood of Jesus. I call on the blood to defend and to speak on our behalf. I call on the name of Jesus to speak and to defend us. I call on the blood and the name of Jesus to move on our behalf. Hallelujah. Lord, I begin to worship you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Every disease at the sound of my voice, I bring you under the feet of Jesus Christ. Every hopeless and terrible situation, I bring you under the feet of Jesus. I release you who is watching me from every dominion by the enemy. And I command you to be set free by the name and blood of Jesus. Amen. And amen. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. Now, I will see you on day three. Please, if you are following me on this prayer camp meeting from today, Friday, 
October 19 through November 19 because you have a need for God. You want to dedicate yourself to God. You want to become obedient to God. You want God's will to begin to happen in your life. You have needs that only God can solve. Write to me and let me know that you are following what I'm doing. Because that's the only way I'll know you are. Or call or email me. Our information. Uh, you will see our information at the end of this program. Of this event. Uh, for today. I will see you on day, on day three. And God be with you. And this is Idika Agui Mary saying to you, God bless you and visit you in Jesus' mighty name.